So if you guys have been following my channel, like a lot of you are, you'll know that I try to break up my videos and show a wide variety of different types of jobs, but also lots of different types of trees. I mean, where I live in this valley down below, we have a Mediterranean climate, which means that we are able to plant trees from all over the world. And some of the species that we work on you know, they don't really belong here, but they, they grow pretty well. So we have the opportunity to work on everything from Albizia to Zelkova. I mean, there are literally hundreds of different species of tree that we get a chance to, to play with <laughs> or get to know. And so if you're into learning about trees, I think you'll really enjoy this channel because I break it up. It's always something a little different. And and you know, I'm not um, I'm not all about the same big removal every single episode. I I try to show you different things about specific trees. And today's tree or today's video is, is going to be a, a little bit different. You know, today's tree that I'm talking about is the European white birch, and I featured it in a few of my videos. And I'm going to talk about it today, and, and I hope that uh, this gives you a little bit of insight into the unique characteristics and flaws of this tree. So the European birch, white birch, is a tree that needs a lot of water and unfortunately in this drought we're losing so many of these trees. They're also a tree that is highly susceptible to decay all the way through the trunk and it's usually associated with the trees being topped. So we've got two birch trees here which were both topped. Oh, well, we got first rain of the year. What a relief. I know it's not the end of fire season, but feeling the rain and feeling the trees sucking up all that moisture, feeling the ground suck on all that water like a sponge. Oh, it just, it feels so good. Now, some of you may have seen the video short that I put up last week. I was having fun with this job. It was only a minute long. Let me show it to you here. So I had fun with this little video short, but it didn't really tell the story. It just showed some of the highlights of, of what we were doing. So I'm going to elaborate more on this. There was an apple tree across the street from where we were working that was absolutely amazing. I just had to show this to you. Look at how big it is. It's just a beautiful, beautiful tree. Anyway, back to the birch. There were two of them. Actually, three of them. They had planted a replacement tree. And these birch trees were clearly ready to fall down. I could see it when I walked up to it and I thought, I wonder if I can muscle this out of the ground by myself. And so I handled, handed the camera to Jorge and I knew I could do it with this one at least. I'm really not that strong. <laughs> it was ready to go. Which tells you a lot about the species. Let's say you're up in a tree like this and you don't do a basal crown inspection before you get up there and you don't know that it's as rotted as this is. It could be a big tree and have this much decay in it. So always, always, always look at the base of the tree before you go up in any tree. I didn't know there was termites in this tree. And they're all about ready to fly away too and start new colonies elsewhere. 
I think termites are a pretty fascinating little ins in insect there. It's uh, interesting that they live their lives without wings and then at the end they, they sprout wings and fly away. And here's where this one of the two trees was topped and you can see that the hollow, this is a species that when it hollows it goes all the way down through the trunk of this tree to the ground and then rots at the base. No, it was not very heavy at all. Might look strong, but it, you know. <laughs> Our chipper is capable of taking uh, wood up to 12 inches in diameter. They have chippers now that'll take much, much larger pieces. But, uh, you know, we, we do end up chipping all the rotten wood. Sometimes I'll give away sound wood for firewood, but it's getting harder and harder to find people that want firewood in my area. California has these burn bans that uh, everybody just stops burning. So the second tree was a little bit more intact, but I thought, you know, if I can pop it out of the ground, that'll save me quite a bit of stump grinding time. So I've got this really old rope. I would never never do this to a rope that we use for anything other than, uh, you know, <laughs> this is kind of a, a junk move here. But um, it, was a, it was a 5 8 inch diameter old rope that had been worn out, and I figured, well, if I break it, I break it. I call that my drag rope. We use that to drag stuff up hills and drag stuff, you know, where you don't really care about it. And as you can see here, it's going. <laughs> I love that sound. It's always fun when you hear a tree go down like that, hear all the cracking. And, and uh, we ended up cutting all three of the trees down, including the young one. Uh, because they are going to replant in here and she recognized that uh, that was a mistake to have another birch tree come in that's not going to get enough water. This tree was also full of termites. You can see the, the ground termites there that were living up in the trunk here. I think oh that's yeah, fascinating. I, I, I love to see how insects colonize wood. And everybody looks and frowns upon termites because they think, oh, they're going to get into my house. But uh, generally they stick to their trees that, that they're working on. So we cut it into pieces that we could pick up and run it through the chipper. I wanted to show you this because this particular tree was fairly sound. You know, this tree rotted at the base, but the trunk was relatively sound, unlike the other one that hollowed all the way through. So I was, I was kind of surprised that this one wasn't more uh, decayed all the way through the trunk. And as we were leaving, I, I stopped and I took a look back. And unfortunately, I scared all the birds away. And I stopped and I paused and a few of them came back. But at one point, there was about 20 birds that came in here. And they were having a field day with all these termites. So... <laughs> You can uh, rest assured that these termites aren't going to be moving into another tree. And so here's the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed and hit the like button. And, you know, I, I really want to share this knowledge of learning about trees and tree care. And, and so if you have friends that are interested in learning more about trees or if you know people that are in the industry, um, do me a favor, you know, send them a link. Thanks.